Whiplash, issue 788, is written by Jeremy Adams, with pencils by Fernando Pissarin, inks by Matt Ryan, with colors by Matt Erms, and letters by Rob Lee. And this issue begins with Gregory Wolf, the previous warden of Iron Heights, having won his campaign for mayor and enacting his first law, which is deputizing the rogues. We then cut to Wally and Linda, where it is confirmed by Dr. Midnight and Mr. Terrific that Linda is indeed pregnant. Wally becomes lightheaded and loses motor function momentarily before switching to ecstatic. Mr. Terrific, however, does want Linda back for periodic checkups because of the previous complication with the twins. This conversation continues into the city before Wally sees Captain Cold holding two young men at freeze gunpoint. Wally speeds in as the Flash and lets the two men go. Cold then tells the Flash that he let the bad guys go and then shows that he has been deputized. The Flash reacts with laughter, which lasts momentarily as the other rogues enter and quickly attack, knocking the Flash down. And just when it looks like they're going to capture him, Linda rushes in and the two escape after Trickster destroys Cold's freeze gun, giving them some cover. They head directly to their house where Wallace had been watching Jay and Irie and it's also here they break the news about the new baby. Later at Terrific Tech, Michael Holt is discussing with Wally how strange it was for Wolf to get the funding to run for mayor in the first place. They conclude there must be something bigger at play before being shown a machine that's supposed to let them access hyper time. We then catch up with Mayor Wolf where we learn that Wolf's intent is to effectively run a police state and through Blacksmith that the money he used to run came from the mob. This in fact has Blacksmith worried about paying them back, but Wolf demonstrates that he himself is metahuman and is not only not afraid of the mob, but wants to wipe them out. And after causing Blacksmith to muscle spasm, she easily falls in line with his plan. We then shift to McRory walking into his apartment discovering the Flash, who tries to get answers from Mick, who only reveals that Wolf cured his cancer which bought his allegiance. The Flash is caught off guard with the blast, knocking him out the window, and, once again, following into a trap set by the rogues. As they begin to read him his rights, a melody fills the air, revealing the Pied Piper is there to help. And this issue is about what I expected. Like with Warden Wolf, I kind of had this feeling that he was going to do this pseudo-police state uh, kind of plan where he wants to outlaw all vigilantes and you know, in fact, ends up utilizing the rogues themselves as like his new police you know, task force, which of course still can be fun. But at the same time, it's a storyline we've seen done before, actually even fairly recently. And then also there's this weird thing that seems to continuously happen with Ward Wolf with each new Flash iteration, where when, you know, Wally or Barry meets up with him over the last, you know, few runs and whatnot, they always introduce him like he's an entirely new character. I mean, I get that the universe has been reset a few times since, you know, his initial debut in the Jeff Johns Flash, but it always feels like every appearance is a first appearance. And as I even stated in my Flash 782 review, given the fact that Wally has already had history with Warden Wolf, just makes it all the weirder. Because if you have read that run, you already know that Warden Wolf does have powers. In fact, he has the power to, you know, relax or tense up a person's muscles. So he can either make you the most relaxed you've ever been, or he can cause the worst muscle spasm of your life. And returning to his general plan from what he said within this issue, it's something that, you know, I can read and enjoy, but I'm not like 100% vested. I mean, does he have other steps in this plan? Who knows, time will tell. I mean, that whole thing with the hyper time seemed like, you know, maybe there's something else at play here, but we'll see when the time comes. Aside from this, Jeremy Adams still continues to soar in the department that is the West family dynamic, because despite him not always utilizing certain characters the best way, he still has a knack for writing strong family scenes. From the interaction to Wallace and the twins, to Linda and Wally getting the news that she's pregnant, these are all very well done, and they do, you know, give me the warm and fuzzies. And there are some very interesting questions at play, like with Linda and her current power set, 
Is this something that she's potentially getting from the baby? And once she has the baby, will her powers then disappear? And I hope that as Linda goes in for these periodic checkups with Dr. Midnight and Mr. Terrific, that these questions get answered. There's also the rogues themselves and Wally's interaction with them, which when it comes to the rogues, there's, you know, usually a little bit of a push-pull element because sometimes the stories present them in a way where you're supposed to take them seriously, and in other times it's presented in a way where you're not supposed to. And it seems that this is one of those times where they kind of maybe not want you to take them seriously, considering Wally's like outbursts of laughter, which I'm not gonna lie, I did crack up with at that because I wasn't expecting such a big strong reaction from him. And of course that bout of laughter and underestimation of the rogues was a grave miscalculation because while he didn't just get smacked down he got smacked down hard so much to the point where he needed linda to help him get out of the situation and i kind of like that i think his two interactions with the rogues in this issue are very effective scenes and does show wally that he shouldn't take the rogues lightly because they can be dangerous when they want to be when it comes to the art i don't think the pencils do the story total justice because Fernando Presaren always looks like he wants to go for this pseudo realistic look by making sure that characters are generally proportional which isn't a bad thing but then tends to overdo it in areas like the facial lines and one area it seems like he tends to struggle with the most are expressions because a lot of the times when he's trying to have his characters, like for an example in this one, when Wally, you know, gets really happy about Linda's pregnancy, it, it's it's such a weird look because it's, you know, very stiff looking and, you know, the mouth stretch maybe a little too wide and almost looks like Wally got doused by Joker gas. And whenever I get scenes like this, they are a little off-putting to look at. And then when I look at Linda, it almost looks to a degree sometimes like her eyes are maybe a little too close together in a few panels. And maybe just her face is a little too long. But one credit that I can give Fernando Presarin is he does decent wide shots with action sequences. And I do like what he does with a lot of like, you know, Wally running and the lightning streaks. Of which I also think that Ryan and Rams in some colors really do help as well. And overall, the Flash issue 788 is more or less what I've come to expect from a Jeremy Adams Flash story. Okay, but not necessarily great villain and plot, strong family storytelling and dynamic, which are also the best parts of the book, and is something that, although doesn't knock my socks off, is leaving me with enough entertainment to keep me coming back issue after issue. And with that, I'm going to score the Flash issue 788 a 7 out of 10. So The Flash issue 788, what did you think about this book if you've read it? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. Alright, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.